He had a long life. Loser to 60, then to 50. How many men can say that still? I thought it would be different. Sir Arlen died the way he lived, as a hedge knight. Riding from keep to keep. Taking service with this lord and that lord. Fighting in their battles. And eating in their halls until the war was done. Then moving on. There were tourneys from time to time as well. Of course, Surulin had not ridden a tilt since he faced the Prince of Dragonstone at Storms and Uragao. They rode against each other again and again. How many times was it? Seven. No matter. Although he lost, he deemed it a victory. It is not every man who can boast that he broke seven lances against the finest knight in the Seven Kingdoms, he said. That is how I thought he would die on the battlefield, not on the side of a muddy road. But Sir Arlen used to watch the sunset and say to me, Another day done, and who knows what the morrow will bring us, Duck. Well, one morrow brought the rains. The one after had brewed wood gutsy wings and the next at show. The fourth day the old man was too weak to ride. And now he was gone. Burbing in a pathetic grave without even accepting to say some prayers over him. Only me. I would leave your sword, but it would rust in the ground. The gods will give you a new one, I guess. I wish you didn't die, sir. You were a true knight and you never beat me when I didn't deserve it except that one time in Maidenpool. It was the in Bowie who ate the widow woman's paint, not me. I told you, it don't matter now. The gods keep you, sir. What now? If I sold thunder and old chestnut, and the saddles and the brittles too, I'll come away with enough silver too. No. The life of a hedge knight is the only life I know. I could find another hedge knight in need of a square to tend his animals and clean his mail. Or I could go to some city to land a sport or King's Landing and join their city guard. Or it fits my grip as well as it ever fit is. And there is a tourney at Ashford Meadow. The old man left three silver stacks, enough for a good meal and enough all as I cared to drink and I need copper pennies. The warm yellow light spilling from the inn's window was invading, but I had to be careful with my coin. Well, I would have liked nothing better after a good warm meal and a soft straw mattress and a roof above my head, the ground would serve right. Are you the stable boy? I'll want my palfrey rubbed down, and oats for all three, then you tend to them. I could, if I wanted. I'll have none of that. I'm a knight. I'll have you know. You don't look to be a knight. Though all knights look the same. No, but they don't look like you, Heather. Your sword belt is made of rope. So long as it holds my scabbard, it serves. See to my horses, you'll get a copper if you do well and a cloud in the air if you don't. Sip where you like. You sip all your water food. Both. There's good lamb, roasted with a crust of herbs, and some ducks my son shot down. Which will you have? Both. Well. You big enough for it. Will you be wanting a room as well? No, some for dead. Some all. And it's only best for it for me. How much farther is it? A day's ride. 
Is my boy seeing your horses, or has he run off again? No. He's there. You seem to have no custom. Half of the town's gone to the tourney. My own would as well, if I allowed it. The boy would rather swagger about with soldiers, and the girls turn size and giggles every time a knight rides by. Couldn't tell you why knights are built the same as other men, and I never knew a joke to change the price of eggs. You were bound for the tourney yourself. Yes, I mean to be a champion. You? You! I dreamed of you! You stay away from me! You! Yeah! You stay one way! My lord. Never you mind that one, sir. All he does is drink and talk about his dreams. I'll see about that food. Food? I'm going to be sick. I wanted a war, but there is none to be found. All going to Meadow. Gods be good. I need some wine. The lime was as good as any I have eaten, and the duck was even better. I had a second tank heart of all with the meal. A third to wish it all down. And a fourth because there was no one to tell me I couldn't. I paid the woman with the silver and still got back a handful of coppers. This is what it mean to be a knight. Good food oh, whenever I wanted it. And no one to clap me on the head. Easy lad. What is going? <laughs> My lord, I didn't mean. Nath, take off that armor and be glad Thunder didn't kick you in that full head. I could ride him as well as you. Close your mouth. I'll have known of your insolence a harbor too. Take it off. What do you think you were doing? Did you feed the horses and rub down sweet food as I told you? How can I tell you with my mouth closed? You can open your mouth to answer. Yes. Now pick up that mail. Shake off the dirt. Put it back where you found it. And the hellfound too. You're going to Ashford. Aren't you? Take me with you, sir. The innkeeper had warned me of this. And what might your mother say to that? My mother? My mother's dead. She wouldn't say anything. What about? It didn't make sense. But my head was still a little fussy from the all. Perhaps he was only apprentice to the innkeep. Are you an orphan boy? Are you? I was once, till the old man took me in. If you took me, I could squire for you. I have no need for a squire. Every knight needs a squire. You look like you need one more than most. And you look like you need a clout in the air. Throw me a sack of oats. I'm off to Ashford alone. It was a pity I couldn't take him with me. But he had a good life there at the inn. A better one than he'd have scoring for a hedge knight. Taking him would have been no kindness. Here, lad. For your help. Talking him would have been no kindness. I told myself again. Yet as I headed down the road I could feel the stubble boy watching my back sullen and silent. Ashford Meadow. The old man had ridden with some with some of these knights others I knew from tales told in common rooms and round capfers. I'd have never learned the magic of writing and writing. But the old man had been relentless when it came to teaching me heraldry. The night tangles of Lord Karn of the Marches. The crowned stag for Sir Lionel Berthine. The Tarly Huntsman. Thou Stendarin's purple lightning, the red up of the Fossways. Lannister, Penrose, Marbron Hightower, Frey. It seems as though every lordly house of the West and South had sent a knight or three to see the fair maid and brave the list in her honor. A threadbare old cloak would be my shelter that night. My supper would be a hard, strangly piece of salt beef. If I made my camp upon that gaudy field, I would suffer both silent scorn and open mockery. A few would perhaps treat me kindly, yet in a way that was almost worse. A hedge knight must hold tight to his pride. I must earn my place in that company. If I fought well, some lord may take me into his household. Then. Fresh meat every night in a castle hall in my own pavilion at Tarnies. But first I must do well. On the outskirts of the Great Medo, a good half mile from town and castle, I found a place where a bend in the brook had formed a deep pool. It was pretty spot, and no one had laid claim on it. This would be my pavilion, a pavilion roofed with leaves greener than the banners of the Tyrells and the Esturments. It had been a long day. I was covered in the dust of travel. He insisted that we wish ourselves hit the heels every time the moon turned. 
whether we smelled sore or not, and now that I was a knight, I vowed to do the same. Afterwards, I sat under the elm and let the warm spring air dry my skin and watched the dragonfly move lazily among the reeds. I wonder why they would name it Dragonfly, it looked nothing like a dragon. Not that I had ever seen a dragon, but the old man had. I'd hear the story half a hundred times. Tell me about the dragon, sir. Again. He'd say. I was just a little boy, and my grandfather took me to King's Landing. While we were there, I saw the last dragon. It was the year before it died. She was a green female small and stunted, her wings withered. Aegon the Unlucky. He was afraid of dragons, for he'd seen his uncle's beast devour. Oh, mother. The summers have been shorter since the last dragon died, and the winters longer and crueler. And the dragon raised its head and roared. Dang beast! Along the edge of the field, dozens of merchants had erected their stalls. Have at thee! Selling felts and fruits, belts and bots, hides and hawks, stones, saces, full of all manner of goods. I watch a puppet knight battle a puppet dragon while I eat. The puppets were good, hopefully crafted and manipulated. Awful truth be told, I think I watch the puppeteer more than the puppets. I would have tossed the girl a copper if I'd had one to spare, but just now I needed every coin, for on the moor I would enroll my name on the list, but I had other matters to look into on this night if I hoped to challenge. You do good work. None better. I need the armor for the tourney, a sort of good mail, with gorget, reeves and greathelm. You're a big one, but I've armored bigger. Neil, I want to measure those shoulders and... Knack of yours. Lift your arm. You can stand. I have uh, some pieces in my wagon that might do for you. Nothing prettied up with gold or silver. Mind you, just good steel, strong and plain. I make helms that look like helms. Not wing pigs and queer foreign fruits. But it will serve you better if you take a lance in the face. That's all I want, how much? A hundred stags? I'm feeling kindly. Night hundred. I could trade you some old armor. Made for a smaller man, a half elm. A male hubbock. Steely Pate sells only his own work. But it might be I could make use of the metal. If it's not too rusted, I'll take it and armor you for six hundred. I'll give you two silver now. And the armor and the rest of the cone on the morrow. The silver's buys you a day after that. I sell my work to the next man. You'll get it all. I mean to be a champion here. You, and these other knights. I suppose they all came just to cheer you on. One victory is all I need. That's not so much to hope for. Even so, the old man would never have hoped for it. It's not every man who can boast that he broke seven lances against the finest knight in the Seven Kingdoms, he said. But it didn't stop there. I could never hope to do better, so why should I try? And he never rode Dill again. But I was quick and I was strong, he always said so. What was true for him need not be true for me. What is this? My armor horses. Leave my horses alone, son of. You, what are you doing here? Cooking a fish? Do you want some?